Welcome to week three of the score. The games continue to get bigger and bigger on the Iowa side of the river as we've begun district play. It was rainy and soggy out there tonight, Corey. Just a little bit. You it, look drier than I did. It, it didn't rain all night for me, which was nice. I had my rain gear on, so that was really good. Um, there's a lot of good games out there and bragging rights on the line between Davenport North and Davenport West. That's right. We have week three of our Illinois Coaches Challenge coming up, but we start on the football field in Iowa and a good one up in DeWitt. And that's where we'll head first. North Scott and Central DeWitt doing battle. Don Umlin getting everybody ready. You could tell it was a mud fest. First quarter, ball goes on the turf and there is David Borchers there to recover it. Deep in enemy territory. A few plays later, third down through the pouring rain. It is Grayson Jewell finding Jacob Nelson. 11 yard touchdown strike. That made it seven nothing. That's a big play, remember that one. Later in the game, second quarter, North Scott's defense suffocating. Check out Joey Peterson nice. blowing up the backfield, tackled both the quarterback and the running back, got the one he needed. A little muddy really there. good job by that young man. More from the Lancers, more special teams. Check out the punt return. It is Oliver Hughes making a guy miss, shedding a few tackles, getting some good blocks, and he bounces to the outside. Not going the fastest because there's so much mud and slop, but look at him go down the sideline, down inside the 20-yard line. But the Sabres defense would come up with a big play after that. Check out the interception by David Harper. This would kill the drive. That one touchdown you saw, that's the difference. Wow. North Scott wins this one 7-0, your final score. All right, to Spartan Stadium we go. Pleasant Valley, 3-0, hosting Muscatine. Opening quarter bolt and uh, 14 to nothing. Muskie's driving. That was Eli Gay. Fakes keeps it and gets, picks up a first down. Next play, Muskie's welcome back. Tim Nimley, fourth and short, lugs it up the middle for another first down. And that would lead to this Menton Cooper. He has a little daylight. Muscles in for the score. 14 to seven, just before the half. Spartans keep it on the ground. Zach and go. And he goes. Bouncing to the outside. Enough to move the change. That, would end up leading to the half. Checking a final in this one. It is Pleasant Valley winning 21 to 14. Let's head to Brady Street Stadium. City bragging rights on the line in this one. And it's Wildcats and Falcons matching up. West gets an early stop and then takes flight. Brady Hansen fires to Jordan White down the sidelines, 20 yard, but the Falcons would not score on the drive. And we've heard it a lot. Safety first. West punting in its own end zone. North's Gage Avant smothers the punter for the safety. 2 0 in the second quarter. Wildcats on the move. Nolan Mosier on third and long, connecting to a sledding. Giovanni Morales to move the sticks. The Cats get three out of the deal. Isaac Griffiths drills the 35 yard field goal. That made it 5 0. North's defense up to the task all evening. Amir Lomas and Devante Hicks meet at the quarterback for the sack. North tries to punch it in just before the half, but the West defense delivers. That's Hunter Rungi with the pick. 5 0 at the half. Third quarter, Cats at a safety, then on the move for the first touchdown of the game. Zane Beebe is relentless. The 13 yard touchdown Ooh. run. That would make it 14-0 on the next play. Actually, on the next play, it's Cade Sheedy doing the honors. He gets into the end zone. North posts a 21-0 victory at Brady Street Stadium. So North now 2-0 on the season, and we will check in with head coach of the North Wildcats, I do believe, is with us. Adam Height, we had to track him down. He's back <laughs> at school, hard at work. <laughs> Coach, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, congratulations on the victory. I want to start with the defense, because so often on highlights we show touchdowns and yards. Your defense, especially your run defense tonight, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, like I told, I told those guys, um, you know, be the best defense in the state, because I firmly believe that they can. And uh, they just come out and do a tremendous job. Coach Fisher, my defensive coordinator, always gets those guys ready to play, puts them in the right spot. And uh, I've told them since day one, and I'm an offensive guy, but I said our defense is going to be the pulse of this team. And they just, they've been showing it the past two weeks. Brandon, what did it mean to you to win tonight and beat your mentor? I know a guy that you worked with, worked for. Uh, he brought you on staff, which was uh, Coach Cruzy. What did it mean to get that win over him tonight? 
I think it's for both of us, it was just kind of a game we weren't really looking forward to because we knew, uh, know each other, you know, I know him and uh, he knows everything we're doing over here. So it was just kind of relief a little bit to get it taken care of and out of the way. Um, I know we're kind of both glad that it wasn't a game that was later in the season, it was early on. Um, but now we're on to Bettendorf, you know, that's, that's a game that our guys are hungry for. Um, you know, in the locker room, it was a sombering moment. You know, they, they were up, but it felt like a loss because they know we could have done better uh, tonight. But uh, I told them, hey, I said, our focus shifts to Bettendorf now, and our guys will be ready to play. Coach, you guys are 2-0, and and early season success is nothing different for you. And, and through these past few years, it's, it's not a surprise anymore. It feels like this is where Davenport North belongs. Is there a different feel to this group, especially considering what the groups in the past have done and established? Yeah, it's just the expectations that we've been building on each year, and uh, we've just been growing from that. You know, last year, you know, we started off one and one, and we came out, and then we played uh, Davenport Central and Davenport West, and got the three and one. And then this year, we you know we're two and oh, two and zero. Oh, but our guys know that we can do a lot more, and that was that was a great feeling in the locker room. That just these guys disappointed, but know that we have high expectations, and you know, we really didn't fulfill them tonight, and we're a better team than we showed tonight. So that's that's the 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 culture change that's taking place here is we're not we're never satisfied with what we've got going on. How important is that to keep the guys motivated? You said they're not satisfied, but to keep them motivated, knowing, knowing that Bettendorf is next on the schedule, to keep them motivated and be ready to go next week. It's, it's crucial. And uh, it starts, you know, tomorrow morning, I'll probably be texting the guys, you know, making sure that they're watching the film and all that stuff. And then we'll, coaches will meet and start going over stuff. But it's, it's crucial. It'll start Monday with those guys. Um, I think there's going to be just a different feel of practice knowing we play Bettner. If I don't think we've played them in like two years, and it'll be my first time going against them ever as a coach. So I'm kind of excited for that challenge. And, you know, they, they know what's at stake here, and they know who Bettendorf is, and we're not going to back down from them. You knew it'd be a good game. You knew it was your rival. You didn't know you'd be doing a live shot talking to us in your school parking lot. Coach, <laughs> I really do appreciate it. We got, last week I stood you up, and then this week I have to track you down. So w w you keep winning, <laughs> we'll keep doing this. How's that sound? That, that works for me anytime. Uh, all right, Coach, we appreciate you. Best of luck next week. All right, next stop, Tuvel Stadium. Bettendorf and Central looking for win number one on the season. Opening quarter, Bulldogs with the ball first. With the Central defense swarming. Andrew Hutchcroft first to get to the quarterback, and then a host of Blue Devils get the sack. Bettendorf still working on the ground. It's Zach Garten, rolls right, flips it to Terry Dunn, a little trickeration. He has plenty of space, picks up 20, and a first down. Second quarter, same drive. It's Garten in the flat, Tynan Nukima. Fights his way for a first down inside the 10 yard line and the Bulldogs would eventually break this scoreless game with Garten to Oliver Bacaris. Pretty pass, goes up and gets it, the big fella does. 7-0 Bettendorf at that point. Bulldogs win big, 36 to nothing. We gotta take and be physical right from the beginning. Right from the opening kickoff. You set the tone, you set it. Don't lay off the accelerator. Don't be satisfied. Every single play. This is going to be, I say, a heavyweight fight. Okay? Back and forth. They're going to think they're going to come out and run it down our throats. I know that. But here's the biggest thing. Have a lot of fun. You've earned it. There's not a lot of teams in our history here that have been in our position. You've earned it. You deserve to be here. Now let's go on. Thanks to Coach Diedrichs for going mic'd up. Backyard brawl, bringing together two teams separated by less than six miles. Durant and Wilton Wildcats set the tone early on. First play of the game, Nolan DeLong, one of the best young talents in the state, doing what he does best. 58-yard touchdown, 7-0 home team in front. Later on, it's 7-6, home team adding to it, Keegan Head. Keeping it himself, turning the corner and turning on the Jets. This one goes 35 yards. Wildcats jump out to a 14-6 lead, but the Beavers battle right back. Caleb Sauvel finds Caden Kirkman. The touchdown ties things up at 14 apiece. 10 seconds to go in the half. It is Durant cashing in as head will run run direction, nearly gets stopped, reverses course, and then takes it. 12 yards. Beautiful play right here. Good Gets to the end zone. A key play in the game. 21-14. Durant at the half. Wilton gets close from the third. Jackson Hole punches it into the end zone from seven yards out. The lead down to 21-20 to the fourth we go. Durant would make all the big plays. Carter Wilch with the 
A nice pass from ahead. The touchdown made it 28 to 20. Durant wins this one for the second year in a row, 35-28. For more, we'll head live to Celia Palermo. Thanks, Matt. I'm here with head coach Joel Deirdrix of the Durant Wildcats out here. You guys get another victory in one of the best rivalries in our area. You talked pregame about setting the tone. How important was setting the tone here tonight? Yeah, like I said, Todd came out early and uh, we fought really hard. And the first play went for a touchdown. And then we had to uh, come back and uh, they got us on a kickoff. But I thought our kids really fought hard from the beginning. You described this one as a heavyweight fight. Yeah. It really was that, but this was about bending, not breaking. How crucial was that for your guys tonight? Yeah, he's nerve-wracking as a coach, but it's awesome. The kids did a great job. They worked uh, hard every play, and uh, they never gave up. We had some really some key uh, turnovers when they were in the red zone for them and turned them back away, and then we were able to finish off the game. This team is in a unique position, and you mentioned it earlier as well, that this program, it's in a unique point in its history. You guys are off to a 3-0 and start for the first time in at least more than a decade. We don't know how far those record books go, but you got West Branch, Cascade, you got Beckman ahead. How do you ride this momentum down the stretch of the season? We just uh, take it each week, uh, game by game, and... Uh... What we phrase with these kids is, is it's championship week every week. We don't look to any other games, and we just take it on a Friday night and get out there and do the best we can. You told these guys, have fun, because we don't know in a time like this what any week holds. How important is it for these guys to savor moments like this? Yeah, you know, we're already doing senior night <laughs> in week three, which is unheard of. But, you know, uh, that's right. We want to take each game, and we want to do everything we can and uh, do the best we can for our seniors and for our program. So that's what we're doing on a, on a weekly basis. Thank you so much for staying up late with us, no Coach. Problem. Matt and Corey, I'll send it back to you guys. All right, we will head to West Liberty. Makoka to finally opening their season on the road after two cancellations and looking good in this one. Cannon Coakley, the nice run for a first down right there. Then some defense by the Cardinals as it is Tyson Wilhelm coming up with the interception. Nice play on defense by Makokata. More from Makokata, this time on offense, and it's that guy once again. Coakley keeps it. He should have a huge season as he gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Makokata with the lead. They would go for two, and they would get it. Coakley waits, finds a receiver in the end zone for that two-point conversion. That would make it a 14-0 game. The West Liberty defense would make a nice play right here. Our reigning score standout, Josiah Galvin with the interception, but it was 20 to nothing in the first half, and we'll check out a final score. Makokata, impressive. They win this one 27 to 6, your final in that one. We've reached our first timeout. Up next, Thompson Comanche, Let's Wapolo and New London. And it's a long awaited battle. We like something you've never imagined before. Sterling. Newman Sterling High School. They battle. We're going to check it out in our coach's challenge coming up next on the score.